Hi there everyone, this is Molly McCord and thank you for joining me as we take a look at this Libra full moon of March 2019. Uh, it is exact March 20th, 2019 at 6.43 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So please adjust accordingly to your location on the planet. And we'll take a look at the chart here and what the planets are saying to each other. What this conversation is here in the sky and it's quite dynamic at this full moon. Now the first thing uh, to notice about the full moon is that it's happening during the equinox. The spring equinox in the northern hemisphere, fall equinox in the southern hemisphere. But this is an important equinox because it's the very beginning of the full astrological cycle. It's when the sun here has just moved into Aries which initiates a whole new start, a new beginning. And at the same time, the sun in Aries at zero degrees is opposed by the moon at zero degrees of Libra. So right away, a conversation begins between the masculine and the feminine, between what you are understanding about yourself and how you relate to other people. So we're going to look at this in this video. Now, the sun in Aries is an initiator, a leader. It takes charge. It gets things going. It moves it forward, moves it along. Let's go. And yet the sun is quickly meeting up with Chiron at one degree of Aries, 44 minutes, nearly two degrees. So right away, the story begins to form that this sun in Aries isn't feeling as strong as it wants to. There's a woundedness around understanding who am I now? I've been through some things. I'm different and I'm not quite sure of this new start just yet. Chiron is where we have our doubts, our insecurities. Chiron is where we're building confidence now in this new understanding of self and we don't maybe have answers yet. In fact, there's an injury. There's a sense of, I don't know who I am yet. I feel different. I feel ready. I'm putting it together. I'm figuring it out. But there's a sense here that you're meant to follow these new energies in yourself, these new parts of yourself that are coming through. Because Chiron has just started in Aries. There's an honoring of your own newness now. This, the parts of you that maybe have felt weaker are going to gain courage to be yourself. The courage to be yourself is emerging with this full moon. And you could feel this, this full moon as the push and pull between who you are and how you show up in relationships with other people. The moon in Libra is concerned about the other. It's objective, whereas this is subjective. It wants conversation. It wants to work with others. And this is what you need to figure out on your own. So there's parts of yourself that you take into conversation with other people to reflect back if it's true for you now. So there's a relationship dynamic here that is mirroring your new relationship with yourself. And perhaps if these parts of you are feeling uncertain, insecure, maybe just a little bit vulnerable, you go to other people for what you need. Now this can be healthy or unhealthy. This can be understanding that we need relationships. We need to connect with others for support, for people who can hear you, who can understand what you're going through. But ultimately the power comes back to you. So there's this dynamic here during every Libra full moon where we check in on relationships because the moon in Libra, again, is about relationships, but every relationship is a mirror of our own relationship with ourself. 
the inner relationship that we have and how we share who we are with others. So you're checking in on relationships with other people who sees who you really are, who understands who you really are now, as you're still figuring maybe parts of this out for yourself. But this full moon really brings up the energy of giving and receiving. People you have time for, people you want to connect with, people who matter, people who are going to be there for you, and you're going to be there for them. That's the other thing. Aries can be one-sided about me, 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 but this is also looking at, well, who do you show up for? Who are you there for? You are the listening ear. You are their counterpart or their ally. That's also important here. The energy that you give to others comes up. And because this is during the equinox, and the equinox is always about balance, there's meant to be this balancing of energies. And that balancing of energies is within your own consciousness of I need to save time, energy, and motivation for who I am now. And I can't give it all away. So make sure you're not overly committed or you're not doing too much for other people. You're coming back to these parts of yourself that are forming now. There's a formation happening. A birthing happening. And you need to have energy for that. Now we take the story further by looking at the ruling planet. And the ruling planet of this full moon is Venus. Because the moon is in Libra. Libra is ruled by Venus. So then we go to Venus here. Venus is at 23 degrees of Aquarius. Also an air sign also about relationships. But Venus in Aquarius is quite independent. She walks to the beat of her own drum. She wants to be different. Um, She doesn't mind standing out from the crowd. She has a lot of friends. She knows her circle or her people. Um, She looks, she likes people. This is a, this is an energy of connecting with others, having good conversations, hanging out, happy hour, socializing. Um, It's, it's needing people. It's needing people who are the right fit, who have the same values. Venus is about what we value now. Uh, And in Aquarius, it's looking at the future. People who are on the same wavelength, who see things the way you do. Um, Maybe they're even just up for a good conversation. Um, and, And there's a sense of community with this Venus in Aquarius. But there's another interesting energy going on here. And it has to do with the ruler of Aries. So the sun and Chiron are in Aries. And Aries is ruled by Mars, who is strong here in Taurus. He sticks with things. He moves forward practically step by step. He's motivated by money. He's motivated by what he wants. Uh, He's motivated by his own physical development, um, his body, working out, um, taking care of himself. It's a very self-reliant Mars who is at 23 degrees, which you'll notice is exactly squaring Venus. So it adds another layer of tension to relationships with Venus being the feminine, Mars being the masculine. They're both at 23 degrees in fixed signs. They don't want to budge. They don't want to share. And you could experience it as parts of yourself that need to do their own thing right now. And maybe there isn't agreement. And so you need to honor your Mars in Taurus that keeps things simple and clear and basic. And then you can feel this energy of the Venus in Aquarius that wants to share, connect, and be social. But these are energies that are okay on their own. There's an independence here. So again, it adds another layer of, I'm going to call it the tension in the relationship between 
parts of yourself with different needs that are growing in different directions and maybe they just don't have common ground right now. But, you know, they also have support. So this is interesting. Let's follow the energy trail here. Going back to Venus at 23 degrees of Aquarius, look at how it makes this perfect sextile to Jupiter at 23 degrees of Sagittarius. This is fun. This is going out into the world, doing something on your own, learning, expanding, finding the joy, finding something that you love to do and following that. That's really strong here. That's what's going to lift you up. That's what's going to help you break through any barriers or any sense of feeling like I'm just getting the image of like feeling trapped at a desk. There's something free, free loving here. Okay. This is needed. We need to make our own joy. We need to make time for happiness. And Venus has beautiful support from Jupiter that makes everything bigger. That's exciting, exploratory, adventurous. So that's wonderful support for Venus. Now we'll also notice back up to Mars that Mars is receiving a trine from Pluto at 22 degrees of Capricorn. It was just exact a few days before this full moon. But then we also have a trine from the Saturn at 19 degrees of Capricorn. And what's not pictured here on my chart is the south node at 23 degrees of Capricorn. So you have these three points right here in Capricorn lending their strength, commitment, discipline, responsibility, long-term growth and development to Mars who's going for what he wants, who understands he has to put in the time, effort, money, uh, he understanding the cost of what he has to pay for, buy, uh, what he needs for the long term, making the investments that are necessary to build up what matters to him. And so there's a lot at 23 degrees. And now that Mars then sextiles the North Node at 23 degrees of Cancer. So isn't that interesting? All these planets and points at 23 degrees. Having a bigger conversation. So it's asking you to understand that yes, new parts of you are being formed and you could feel insecure about it. It's like when you don't know who you're becoming or these new aspects of yourself first, it can feel like a weakness. But the Chiron is also remembering to be compassionate, to be kind. Don't expect too much of yourself just yet. The relationships of people who have the same values, who understand, who can be objective, who can take you away from where you're being hard on yourself. You ever have a sense of just feeling trapped in your own ego, your own mind, your own perspective? The Libra objectivity depersonalizes it, gives you something else to consider. And then we have this energy of the fun getting out into the world between Venus and Jupiter. That's a good energy to counterbalance the hard work, dedication, and builder energy of Mars working with the Capricorn planets and points. So there's quite a bit happening here and we're not even done. <laughs> we're not even done because look at how Mercury retrograde at 18 degrees of Pisces and is going back to hang out and make a long-term conjunction with Neptune at 16 degrees of Pisces. So this Mercury retrograde uh, stations direct March 27th, 28th, conjunct Neptune. So all of March has had this uncertainty to it 
of something is forming because you've been releasing things during this Mercury retrograde. A lot of March is about the release, the letting go, that what you need to be okay with, like the peace within, the sense of it served a purpose, I'm okay, moving on. As long as I rewrite the story, Mercury is our mind and how we conceptualize things, how we think about things. You're meant to rewrite a story with a higher spiritual perspective. And by the middle of April, April 18th is when Mercury goes into Aries and will be done with this retrograde. So we have another month of rewriting this story, things not being quite clear yet and not being overly mental. Don't be too mental because it won't be clear just yet. You know, it's interesting how these themes of uncertainty are coming through at a human level, though. I mean, at a human level. Mercury is your mental human self, and the sun in Aries is is very much your ego emerging, your sense of self-developing. Um, there's a lot in our humanness that's changing, reforming, coming together in a new way. Get out of your head and have some fun. See, keep learning. Stay open. Stay open to what you're meant to see and learn um, that allows you to keep growing and to connect with other people who get it. Um, also, Venus in Aquarius is metaphysical. It's astrology. It's understanding things in a different way. It's quantum energies. It's staying open to what's new, what's what's on trend, what's coming up next. Um, that can be invigorating. And then it's tending to our physical reality in a responsible way, showing up, staying motivated, because this Mars is talking to the North Node in Cancer, which is your heart, and following yourself. I mean, this is trusting in yourself. I'm just feeling like a lot of this energy is asking you to be gentle with yourself, kind to yourself as things are coming together, as the sun makes this conjunction to Chiron, to watch your ego. This can be ego wounds, um, a sense of self that overreacts to fight or to prove something. But if you take a step back and look at it objectively, it's not personal, it's not about you. Um, look at it from another angle. Look at it from another angle. And then one more planet in the mix is Uranus, which has just entered Taurus. So he's just getting started at zero degrees of Taurus. Although uh, this energy has been in the works since 2018. This is when more is really ready to go. A new sense of what you value. A new sense of what matters. A new, 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 new. See how everything's like new, 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 new. It takes time for something to bake in the oven. <laughs> it takes time for pieces to connect and be clear. And we're entering a next phase of the journey of a cycle of, of a new, a new energy that can't be rushed. Find the simple things to enjoy, find the daily joy, find where you can be at peace with what is. Even though you want to know and it's not clear, there, there's meant to be a simpleness about this full moon that allows you the space and, and the room for these new ideas and new aspects of self to come through, but remain objective. Talk it out, share as needed, get it out of your head. Look for the beauty in life right now, especially with this Capricorn energy. You probably heard my deep sigh there. Um, as the 
south node conjuncts Pluto at 22 degrees, the end of March and into April. There's even more that comes out. Secrets, power, corruption, what is unjust, what is no longer needed, what's changing on the planet, what we don't need. It's a huge letting go of power structures. And then, of course, we have this Saturn getting closer to Pluto. This will be exact January 2020. And Saturn will be stationing retrograde here at 19 degrees of Capricorn in April. The seriousness is real. The changing of our world is real. It's happening. It's underway. We know that. But we can't get too bogged down by this. We have to remember what lights us up, what excites us, what keeps us inspired and motivated to live a good life. As we take care of ourselves, our daily needs, we find the peace, the simple joys, the things that matter. And we honor that as this new cycle begins, we're trusting in huge ways of what's ending. And I see too how this um, Mercury, as Mercury's been retrograding in Pisces, it's been talking with the Capricorn planets. Asking us to not get bogged down by what's being revealed and to remember that everything has a cycle. Everything changes. Change is constant. Find the spiritual perspective to deal with the real world reality. Return to the spiritual understanding, the bigger cycles, the sense of karma is meant to end. Okay, When karma is completed, it frees the soul. Then it's complete. You don't have to stay in that cycle. You you can let it go. You can let that ending happen. If you can maintain the higher spiritual perspective, even with yourself, especially with yourself, it will help you remain detached. Detached um, during these endings, very big endings for humanity, um, big developments for humanity. And I'm also feeling like it's important to stay aware of our, there's a lot of relationship dynamics here that are um, uncomfortable. So just stay conscious of what you take out to other people um, because you could feel this square between the feminine and the masculine, either within you or with another person. And I feel like there's a lot of breathing room required. Breathing room is required during this full moon. So basically, turn off your phone <laughs> and uh, step away from people. But in all seriousness, you might want to retreat into a world of your own making, um, into anything that returns you to a sense of peace and beauty as some things get figured out and worked out. Uh, during this rather potent full moon. So I hope that provides some understanding around what is unfolding. You look at where the moon is in your chart for where this full moon is illuminating something for you in that house, in that house that the moon at zero degrees of Libra will be traveling through, opposing the sun, bringing something to light, balancing what you only thought of on your one-sided perspective. And this makes it, again, objective and balanced and reminds you that it's not personal. And in fact, it's probably not about you at all, even if that's what the ego feels. There's bigger cycles completing here, my friends. That's just part of this year and next year. It's what we're moving through. 
And so what is your soul perspective on that? So the conversation will continue and I will see you in April for the next new moon. Uh, that will be the new moon in Aries. And until then, I do have a podcast that I upload here to YouTube twice a week. And you can find more astrology teachings under my playlists. And underneath this video, I offer some astrology classes. Uh, so check those out if I can help you learn more about your chart or what's happening for you. Uh, my website is ConsciousCoolChic.com. You'll find my 12 books. Uh, any of my spiritual teachings, consciousness topics are there. And if you are a healer, a spiritual guide, a teacher, someone who's here to support other people, my other website, mollymccord.online, offers resources for building your business and being of more use to more people. So you can check out that information below this video too. Thanks so much and I'll see you back here in two weeks for our Aries new moon.